would anybody else have preferred if Cruz wasn't impossible to hit with bullets in the action scenes? I mean, first you have the I'm going to lay down suppressive fire, and then he, you know, gets up and with no trouble shoots all of these guys whilst walking entirely coverless and without them hitting him at all. And then later, when he walks over to make sure to give her a kiss, I mean, yes, I get that the only two times he takes a bullet, it's for dramatic purposes, like it always is first on the plane, then later when he pulls the Secret Service to protect Simon. And maybe it is because I just watched Rambo, or rather, First Blood, and Punisher Warzone, but I do think it's more interesting when the hero takes cover. You know, think of Face Off. The hero pulls moves and takes cover to avoid getting hit. I will say the the scene in the warehouse or whatever, the bit with, you know, just guy after guy showing up behind June's back, that was actually somewhat funny. And so was Cruz's using an airplane seatbelt as, you know, a nunchuck. And then it getting stuck between the armrest and the seat, that did make me chuckle. Anyway, it was fairly obvious that he was doing something to her bag the two times he bumped into her. Or maybe it's just because I was in... I'm watching a spy flick mode and looking out for stuff like that. You know, using her as a mule. My question is, why exactly did she forgive him for that? Other things he did that might have seemed to hurt her were for her protection. That part really... I don't know, maybe it's one of the things that got left over from what I understand were several rewrites of the script. Wasn't it a little too obvious that Sarsgaard was the villain? I'll admit that I didn't for sure think, ah, he's definitely the one before it was. Did anybody else at first think he was just shooting the other agent in the shoulder? I do realize he did shoot him in the chest, but at first it looked like he was just gonna wink. But I also never thought that guy is so not the bad guy. I mean, it isn't just the casting, it isn't just because he played a rapist before. I do think that they should have gotten someone else for that. I don't know, I've just recently really watched him stretch his acting muscle, and I just hate to see him, frankly, waste time on underwritten roles like this. I mean, Boys Don't Cry, Kinsey, important, controversial roles like that. I mean, there are way too few good actors who are willing to really take chances like he is. So about 10 minutes after Roy has drilled to definitely not get in a vehicle with them, she gets in a vehicle with him. Ah, but not until Sarsgaard asks. That gets to be a bit of a theme, doesn't it? It's really imperative that you stay Where would I go? So she doesn't stay there. I'd say most of the character moments worked, I know it's supposed to be all romantic and stuff with the breakfast he prepares for her and all, but wouldn't the omelette be cold? How long exactly has that OJ been standing out? And does the glove fit, by the way? I mean, wouldn't it go bad? When she starts talking to that guy who turns out to be a professional hitman, although his method appears to largely consist of throwing his target back and forth into tables. Did that remind anybody else of Enemy of the State? Think about it. Did he say the name or did you say it and then he picked up on it? Simon was a little bit of an annoying nerd stereotype. I mean, he was really just there so that there was someone else to be a hostage other than June. He didn't really have an arc. He didn't develop through the story. Does anybody else not at all buy that June at the end of it just could plan and take him out of the, the hospital and all. I mean, I kind of liked that she drugged him and the bikini shorts thing. I mean, it was entirely see-through. The moment he turned around and saw the medicine, I was saying, she's the nurse and that's gonna sedate him. I will say that the what day is today, someday exchange was decent enough. And then she apparently just goes on vacation and I have to ask, where is her money coming from? Is the garage just doing that well? She can apparently afford to travel a ton and there isn't at any point any mention of I might get fired if I don't show up at the job. Okay, maybe she owned the garage, but still, where is the money coming from? 
I liked that he was helping the parents and that his phone thing with the activity at that place was a way of making sure that, you know, they're safe. But the punchline of, oh, you don't know what you're doing on that computer was pretty forced and exposition happy. Both times. So for Tom Cruise not wanting to do a movie that was like the Mission Impossible trilogy, him using the front or underbelly of a motorcycle as a shield was pretty much right out of MI2. Woo. What happened to you on that one? As a matter of fact, what on earth happened to you on most of your American movies? Other than Face Off? Anyway, that's for another video. So hey, Shannon's getting married. Better hope she doesn't go to France, because if she gets herself kidnapped, her dad's not going to be able to come pick her up, because in this movie he's dead. Anyway, marriage, good news. I just hope it's not to Boone. And not just because he's dead taking from halfway incest to necrophilia, but because she's dead too. Wait, does that make it nastier? Is it more acceptable for two dead people to marry than for one living person to marry a dead one? Is that what they mean by love you to death? Wait, if it's till death do us part, does that mean that everybody in heaven is single? Does that mean that God himself doesn't want marriage in a place that only has good? Or is it just the old guy's way of saying, hey, Tabula rasa, think hard, this marriage is forever. I'm not the only one who saw it coming every single time Cruz sedated Diaz, right? Did think it was cool enough that one time he threw in a Vulcan neck pinch just for variety's sake. I talked about how almost no one hits Miller. I do think they did a reasonable job of making him, at times, vulnerable, like in the train when he's fighting the hired killer. And it was nice that June then helps in saving the day. About the train, am I the only one whose first thought when Simon says we have to cool the Sephir down was stick it out the window for a couple of seconds? Seriously, it looked plenty cold there. Is it just me or did Simon have some of the ugliest looking facial hair in the history of facial hair? I mean, I'm not claiming to be a handsome devil here. I'm just saying I certainly hope that I don't look like I lost a fight with an entire legion of lawnmowers so hard that I didn't even beat. When the fighting erupted on the plane, was I the only one thinking, when are they going to get the guns out? Seriously, apparently on the entire plane, there were only two or three guns when there were maybe six or seven agents out. Last thing on the train, I did really like the professional hitman's death. June being drugged part of the way on these many trips around the globe. Did anybody else feel a little bit cheated out of worldwide traveling? Like you go on a really cool road trip and then nobody bothers to wake you up to see at least a solid third of the sights. Is it just me or the first time you saw Simon, didn't he seem more like a stoner than a mathematical genius? I mean, he's built up as a mathematical genius, writing formulas and whatnot. And then when we see him, it's like, Dude, I can totally see my breath here. Is it just me, or did anybody else think that Cruz had handcuffed himself to June, not her two hands together? You know, in the diner? She would still be able to run if he hadn't handcuffed her to anything other than herself. So, the pun in the title doesn't really have any significance. Right? I mean, his name used to be Knight, his family now believes he's dead, and he's living under an assumed name, which I don't think is entirely true, at least not of all CIA operatives, but whatever. But the Day thing, yeah, I get that, you know, Knight with a K, but her last name is Havens, not Day, so I did like him leaving the CIA there at the end. And I think we're supposed to take the very last line before the... Oh, we're going to Cape Horn, to mean that they were going to be reunited, the three of them. Roy and his parents. I do want to call BS on one thing in regards to the scene where June meets what are apparently to be her future in-laws. The line, you're all wet, come into the house, does not work. I've tried that on plenty of hot chicks, never gotten me anywhere. Well, those were my thoughts on night and day. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.